So what are some of the common mistakes that people make when filing Form I-130? First of all, what is Form I-130? I-130 is used by US citizens and green card holders to get a green card for family members. If you're filing this form or planning to in the future, please pay close attention to these mistakes because mistakes can cause huge delays, <laughs> extra costs, and unnecessary stress. All right, so what are these mistakes? I'm Shari Khan, the South Asian attorney. I'm licensed to practice law in the US and I help people worldwide with American immigration law. One of the biggest mistakes people make is selecting the wrong processing method. So on the I-130, you basically have two options. Adjustment of status. This is when the family member is already in the US and you want to sponsor them. The second method is consular processing. This is when the family member is outside the US and so will go through the US embassy in their home country. Marking the wrong option can result in your case being processed in the wrong place. And this can cause delays. For example, if your family member is outside the US, you should select consular processing and include the embassy information. On the other hand, if your family member is in the US, they'll file for adjustment of status and need to specify the USCIS office near you on the I-130. If you're unsure, use the USCIS office locator tool to find the correct office. Double check everything before submitting. If you're sponsoring more than one family member, for example, if you're a US citizen sponsoring both parents, you'll need to file two separate forms. So two separate I-130s. A spouse and their child will also need their own petitions, unless you're a green card holder, in which case minor children are usually included with a spouse's petition. Strange, right? But that's just how it goes. Mistakes here can lead to some family members being approved while others waiting for months or even years. USCIS does not require you to send original documents with your petition. Always send photocopies of things like birth and marriage certificates or passports. Why you ask? Well, if you send the originals, you might not get them back in time for your interview. And you're gonna need these originals at your interview. All right, so if you're petitioning for a family member and you're outside the US, remember that US sponsors must show that they intend to live in the US once their relative gets a green card. And this can get a little tricky if you've been living overseas. The embassy may ask for proof that you're moving back to the US, like a lease agreement, a job offer, voter registration, etc. And failing to show this could lead to a denial. If you're frequently traveling back and forth, make sure that your addresses are accurate to avoid any confusion. All right, so not all family members are eligible for sponsorship. Here's a quick breakdown. US citizens can sponsor spouses, married and unmarried children, parents and siblings. Green card holders can sponsor spouses, minor children, and unmarried adult children. One common mistake is that when a green card holder files for their child, but the child gets married before the case is approved. Marriage in this case disqualifies the child as a dependent and they'll deny his or her green card. Another tricky situation is with stepchildren or adopted children. For stepchildren, the marriage must happen happen before the child turns 18. For adopted children, the adoption must be finalized before the child turns 16. These are some of the most common mistakes that can cause big headaches when filing Form I-130. Immigration law can be complex, but with the right planning and attention to detail, you can avoid these mistakes. If you have questions about your case or you need help, feel free to contact my office.